Hey creeps, it's Cameron again and welcome back to my channel where I talk about books, movies, writing, and all things spooky. And on this episode of Library Macabre, I have a book haul for you. All right, so I haven't done a book haul in several months. For a while there, I was doing monthly book hauls. That just hasn't been happening lately, and I apologize for that. Maybe I will update you on some of the books that I've bought over the past several months. If you want a big, long video or a video series, like if you want to see that, then I will consider sitting down and filming it. It would be very, very long. But for now, I'm just gonna show you some books that I bought a couple weeks ago at a used bookstore called Aroundabout Books. And this is a used bookstore in Troy, Ohio. I had never even heard of them before until I saw a post on the Books of Horror page on Facebook. Somebody had posted that there was a really nice horror section at this bookstore. Like I said, I had never heard of this bookstore before, so I was really surprised to see it pop up. Usually I think that I know, you know, all of the bookstores within a certain mile radius of my house, but this was completely new to me. So I saw the pictures they posted of the horror section, which is actually a whole room of horror books. All of them are retro, you know, vintage horror paperbacks. It's amazing. And I was like, oh my God, well, I need to go. I need to go like this weekend. No, no, I wound up going the next day after work. Like, I couldn't wait. So I was able to snag a lot of books. I got over 80 books while I was there. I met an employee there named Mike, super nice guy, and I told him that I would be posting a video. So, hey Mike. But anyway, like I said, a lot of books. I'm gonna go ahead and start, and I'm gonna begin with all of the YA kind of children's horror books that I picked up first. All right, so first I found a set of these Fun Facts horror books. I had never heard of these. Uh, these were from 1996, so Fun Facts, it's really weird. They were like a company that mostly did books about, you know, facts, facts about science and, and mathematics and magic tricks and things like that. But I guess at some point they wound up uh, cashing in off of uh, Point Horror because these books look a lot like Point Horror books. So we have book one, which is called Panic Station. And what's really weird about these is that they have like little holes in the spine. So you could get like this hardcover spiral binder and put each of the books in there and combine them all together. I'd like to track one down, honestly. But yeah, there's Panic Station. Book number two is called Dream Painter. Got a creepy clown on the cover. Then we have Burning Secret, Bad Blood. This one is especially point horror looking. The Seer's Stone, Eyes of the Skull, and then Dangerous Friend, which is book eight. So it looks like I have books one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. So I still need book four. I did look up how many books there were. I can't remember exactly, but I believe it was like 16 or something. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to track down the other ones in the series. If you know more about this, please let me know. And then I found four books from the Bloodlust series. This is another one from the 90s. So we have Bloodlust, Irresistible, Buttlust, Reckless, Bloodlust, sorry, Mesmerized, and Immortal. I also found a couple of books from the Horror High series, which is by Nicholas Adams. These are so rare, I never see these anywhere. So I was very surprised to find these. This one is uh, book number seven, it's called Pep Rally, and book number three, Heartbreaker. Love the retro look of these covers, they're amazing. Very, very neon. I must, must find the other books in this series. If you ever run across them and you want to sell them to me, let me know because I will buy them from you. Getting one more step closer to finishing my Dark Forces collection, we have book number 13. This is called The Cursed by Larry Weinberg. 
I also found a copy of My Bloody Valentine by Joe Gibson, not related to the movie in any way. I also finally found a copy of October Moon by Michael Scott. I have been wanting this book for years. Literally since I was a kid, I have been looking for this book. Finally got it. So happy. So I'm very excited to read this, probably in October. Seems like a good Halloween read. I also picked up Last Date by Edmund Plant. This is another YA horror book that I had never heard of, so totally new to me. And then also we got Red Work. This is by Michael Bedard. I love the cover on this. And this one sounds really cool. It's like an old man who accidentally releases an ancient evil from an old house. So obviously it sounds totally up my alley. I also found a first edition copy of Tales for the Midnight Hour by J.D. Stamper. Now I have a copy of this book from my childhood. It's a totally different cover though. Um, I'll post the cover around here somewhere so you can see if you grew up reading YA horror you probably recognize that cover. I think I like this one just as much as the other one, if not maybe a little bit more. It just has a really like a zebra books kind of look to it. I also found The Shrieking Skull. This is by Stephen um, I can't pronounce the last name, so I won't even try. Uh, I just thought that looked really cool. I like the cover a lot. Next is Will Eisner's Spirit Casebook of True Haunted Houses and Ghosts. Super long title. Loving the cover on that one as well. And the book is fully like illustrated with all kinds of cool stuff, so I had to pick this up. Here we have a book from the Horror Show series. This one is called The Haunted Playground and Other Stories. And then I also found one of the Shivers books. This is book number 17, Ghosts of Camp Massacre. And this was like a Goosebumps ripoff from back in the 90s. Uh, but I liked the Shivers books a lot. I actually think some of these were better than Goosebumps. They were definitely a little bit scarier and sometimes quite a bit more gruesome than Goosebumps. Like I remember some of these being pretty gory. The only nonfiction book that I picked up is The Dracula Archives. This is by Raymond Radorf. Radorf? I think it's Radorf. And this just kind of goes over the history of Dracula the book and the movies and whatnot. Okay, and now I'm gonna get into the Vintage Horror Adult paperbacks. The first one I have is called Raw Pain Max. And this is by Dean Anderson. Just take a minute to look at this cover. I don't know what is going on, but it looks amazing. I did see this on Facebook like a year or two ago. Somebody posted a picture of it and I had always wanted it, but I kind of forgot about it after some time. And then I saw it again at the bookstore and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I have been wanting this. It looks awesome and weird and I must read it. Another that I saw on the Books of Horror Facebook page was Re Life. This is by Dan Barton, and ever since I saw it on that page, I've been wanting a copy, and I finally found one. So this looks awesome. At first, the cover looks kind of boring, but then if you look in the reflection on the table here, there's like a creepy face. Very subtle. I, I really like this cover a lot. We also have a copy of Ripper, which is an anthology of stories based off of Jack the Ripper. This was published by Tor in... 1988. Published by Pocket Books in 1991, we have Neverland. This is by Douglas Clegg. Uh, this is another one that I've been hearing a lot of great things about. I've always wanted a copy, so I am glad to finally have one to go along with my other Douglas Clegg books. Wild Blood by Nancy A. Collins. This was published by ROC in 1994. I thought this was a newer book, but it is a little bit older, actually. Uh, this is one about vampires, I think, or maybe it's werewolves. She also wrote a book called Sunglasses After Dark, which is about vampires, so I'm thinking maybe that's her thing. Uh, but yeah, that is a really cool cover. Gives me some Lost Boys vibes. This next one was published originally in 1987, but this paperback was published in August of 1988 and that is The Hunting Season by John Coyne. This is published by Warner Books. Next is The Pines. This is by Robert Dunbar. Next is a book that was published by Leisure in 1981. So this is a pretty early Leisure book, and again, I had never heard of this. 
ever. This is called The Burning by Jeff Fane. Not in relation to the burning slasher film from the 80s, which is a great film, by the way. Uh, an evil fresh from hell holds a fiery power over life and death, a will to shift shapes, to live in outer and inner dimensions, and it revels in taking human life. It has to, for it hungers. And that is it with a capital I, by the way. Uh, yeah, sounds pretty good. It's another one of those evil runs amok kind of books. Here we have a book from the UK. This was published by Arrow in 1977. So this is an early one. I was so happy to find this. I've always wanted a copy of this, but I never thought I'd ever find one since it is a UK book and those are pretty hard to find here. This is called The Dance of Blood. This is by Stuart Farrer. Uh, the cover on that is amazing. It's so weird. Good old John Ferris. We have Nightfall. And this one was published by Tor. Next up, we have two books by Michael Green. And I think he only ever wrote these two. I don't think he ever wrote anything else. Um, I've been looking for these books forever. And again, I never thought I'd get them, but here we are. This one is called The Jim Jams. And I think this is like an alien invasion story. It looks so crazy. And then this one, this is called Dry Skull Dreams. I could just look at the covers of these. They're they are everything. And then I have a nice hefty stack of horror anthologies, all of which are from the 90s. So the first one we have is Shock Rock. It's a classic horror anthology that I've always wanted to read, so now I will finally be able to do that. And this has a foreword by Alice Cooper, and it is edited by Jeff Gelb. Another one that is edited by Jeff Gelb is book seven, I think, in the Hot Blood series. This is called Fear the Fever. I have a couple of these and I've been trying to pick them up whenever I find them for cheap. These are more like erotic horror, which isn't totally my thing, but I don't know, these look really cool. And there's a lot of great authors. There's Jack Ketchum, Edward Lee, Graham Masterton, Lucy Taylor, Bruce Jones, Jane Williamson, and the list goes on and on. Like, there's a lot of big names in this series, so I would like to check it out eventually. And from the same editor, we have Fear Itself which is obviously an anthology all about fears and phobias. And speaking of phobias, we have more phobias, which is an anthology with stories, of course, all about phobias. Um, I don't have the first one, uh, just the second one, but hopefully I can find a copy of the first one. And from the same editor who edited more phobias, we have Back from the Dead, Vampire Detectives, and White House. Horrors. These are all published by Dahl in the 90s. I also found Siren, which is by Linda Crockett Gray. This was published by Playboy in 19... 1982. So I love the cover on that one, but I also love the cover of this edition, which was published by Tor uh, a few years after. So I've got both versions now, which... I'm okay with having duplicates as long as the covers are vastly different. Published by Zebra in 1992, though this was originally released in 1990, we have X's, which is by Dan Greenberg. I believe this is more of a suspense thriller. And then published by Tor in 1988, we have Valley of Lights, and this is by Stephen Gallagher. I've heard a lot of great things about Gallagher's work. I haven't read anything though, so if you have, Drop below in the comments, let me know where I should start, if this is a good one to start with. Published by Tor in 1987, we have Spectre by Stephen Laws. This was one that was uh, featured in Paperbacks from Hell, and I hear a lot of people talk about this here. It's a really good horror novel about friendship. Published by Avon, also from 1986, is The Other Child. And I had never seen this one before, but uh, creepy kids, man. I'm always going to pick up a book about a creepy kid. Going back to the 90s, we have Prototype by Brian Hodge. This was published by Dell in 1996. Uh, this was not part of the Dell Abyss line. I think this one came a little bit after that, though it does have a very uh, Dell Abyss kind of look to it. Published in 1984 by Paper Jacks is a book with probably the coolest cover I've ever seen. This is The Hiding Place by J. Robert Jaynes. If, if a book has a bloody axe on the cover, I'm always going to get it. But just, just this, like this 
woman with this look on her face, with a bloody axe, it's like, I need to read this as soon as possible. It looks so fun. Published by Tor in 1987, there's a lot of Tor books in this haul. We have Blood Hunt. This is by Lee <laughs> Kellogg, <clears throat> uh, a vampire book. Published by Pageant in 1988 is Ancestors by Robert Y. Klein. Really cool cover. Again, I buy a lot of these for the covers, guys. Guilty as charged. It sounds like this is a book about oppressed memories, but also demonic possession, of course. Next, we have a book published by Pinnacle in 1989, and that is Vampire Nights. This is by Timothy Moriarty. Published in 1977 by Pocket Books, we have The Virgin and the Vampire by Robert J. Myers. And this one still has the advertisement for cigarettes in the middle, something that you would never see nowadays. Next we have a, another anthology. This is called Cold Shocks, edited by Tim Sullivan. The Mime by Tony Perfumo. Um, this is one that's really hard to find, but when anybody anybody at all finds a copy of this book it is always damaged and creased up all this wear on the cover like every single copy i have seen anybody have of this book it's looked exactly like this published by dell abyss in the 90s we have the making of a monster by gail peterson i will always pick up dell abyss books always speaking of dell abyss we have another one that was published in 1989 this is called post mortem and it is yet another anthology. This one was edited by Paul F. Olson and David B. Silva. The Harvest Bride by Tony Richards. This was published by Tor in the 80s. I have always adored this cover. I've always wanted a copy, so I was really happy to find one. Published in 87, also by Tor. This is called New Moon by William Relling Jr. Another one published by Tor. This is from 1989. This one is called Tales by Moonlight, Book Two, edited by Jessica Amanda Salmson. Salmonson. These next two were published by Pinnacle in 1980, and these are part of a series uh, that is the Chill series. So we have Book Four, Vegas Vampire, and Book Five, which is called The Phoenix Man. Um, I believe these were in paperbacks from hell. I can't remember for sure. Uh, two more books published by Tor. The first one here is called Soul Storm by Chet Williamson. I've heard a lot of great things about his books as well. Uh, I think Dreamthorpe is his most well-known book. I still need to read that, uh, but that one looks really cool. And then we also have Boundaries by T.M. Wright. Published by Pinnacle in 1993 is Dark Visions by T. Lucian Wright. I have a couple of books by Jane Williamson. Uh, first one is The Black School, and we have Shadows of Death, and then also Extraterrestrial, which he published under his pen name Julian Shock. This was a really early Zebra Press book. We also have More Stone by Bernard Taylor. This is from 1982. We also have one more Del Abyss title, and that is Revenant by Melanie Tim. And then last, but certainly not least, is another one that I've been looking for for a very long time, and that is Kiss Not the Child by John Tiggs. It's published by Leisure in 1985. Whew, that is a lot of books, man. If you are in uh, the Troy, Ohio area or nearby, definitely go check out Around About Books. They have a great selection there. The people who work there are really, really nice. It's a huge store, so even if you aren't into horror, uh, they have ton of other books like a ton it's two stories and i think a basement also it's full of books uh, anyway thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this if you made it all the way through the end thank you uh tell me in the comments below if you've read any of these books let me know what i should start with and i hope to see you in the next video thanks again for watching later creeps